Sydney Zinc here. And Hollywood. Bessie. So, <laughs> we're very hi. excited. We've got a few things to cover off tonight. Um, I hate that lighting, don't you? Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's bright really as a bright. button. Can just turn it down a little. Can we like, I think that's the lowest it will actually go. Let me go. Let me do it. It's crazy. Go I'm like looking at it and I'm like, blah. Yeah. You ready? That's uh, better. <laughs> Let's just do it natural. What? Yeah, that's not. Nah. We're not doing a race, oh, we'll do. Like that? Yeah, that's good. You sure? Don't no. you think? No. No. Maybe we'll turn that one off. Turn that, no, turn, stop, just turn that one off. <laughs> yeah, turn it off. Yeah. 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 No. No? No. Halo. All right, that'll do. <laughs> that'll do. No, not that one. Oh. <laughs> Try it again. <laughs> what is going on? Like the last one you did. That one above is beautiful. Where's our yeah. lighting technician that's gorgeous. tonight? No, that's turn, 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 turn that one off. Uh, is nah. it? This one. The one above. This yeah. is annoying me now. The no, one's the above Lenny. Just the one above Lenny. Go. Yeah, the one that's nice. That's yeah, that's cool. Awesome. All right, Sai, can you tell us if that lighting looks <sighs> all right? Because I can't actually that see it. That was so stressful. We can see, <laughs> we can see you just fine. <laughs> Anyway, oh, that meanwhile back at the ranch. <laughs> <laughs> well, hang on, where's my phone? This I need my phone is... as well. <laughs> I didn't know it was what that colour. We, we weren't even so just you guys. We have been ready for hours, you guys. I haven't. Honey, find your phone. Oh, my phone is on the... <laughs> <laughs> so, so for those watching for the first time... This is Sorry. not the first time we've ever done this. This is the 17th time? <laughs> yeah. If you have anything to <laughs> tell me, funny. just um, send me a message on Slap Side because oh I forgot goodness. that my phone was going to be mounted. You know what we're camera. missing? Niece to do the film. Oh, that's what we're missing. <laughs> we are missing. I'm going to turn that heater off as well. And uh, maybe you sigh, message me instead. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do some fun things while she's gone. You can flick my hair. Yeah, go ahead, you can this. Oh, oh no, not too far. Yeah, not too, no, not too far. Oh, cheapest. <laughs> creepers. <laughs> That's for all the grace moments. So as you can tell, we're looking a bit snazzy because we're celebrating today. And if you come back, you can tell us why we're celebrating. So, um, we're here to chat about the Healthy Mix Dinners 2, which is coming out, hang on, let me look at my notes because I always get stuff wrong, on the 26th of April at 8pm South Australian time. Uh, it's going to be a, a normal standard pre-sale till the 7th of May at midnight. Um, of course, we discount the... Price during the pre-sale, so it's beneficial to buy during the pre-sale, of course. Um, now, what I usually do with these things, you guys, is smash through some of the, the talking points that we want to cover, and then we um, we questions. open it up to questions and answers. And I invited Mezzi and Grant here tonight to do the questions and answers with me because they she did all the work and I wrote half the recipes because it's way more fun then. <laughs> Because it's more fun. Because um, so it's beautiful. more fun, and also um, they give different insights into things than what I can. So I think that's really cool. Now, what are we drinking tonight? Oh, I was drinking something else. I get mine. <laughs> We're actually having hot chocolate. Rogue. So this is one of the recipes found in the healthy mix dinners too. Okay. It's actually quite cold here in South Australia tonight, so mm. mm. so good. Um, but we're celebrating tonight with a hot chocolate. Whether it has other things in it, I have joke it. we won't tell. Yeah, there's, ones, there's two hot <laughs> ones and there's two hotter ones. Um, anyway, so the Healthy Mix Dinners... Are you kidding me? <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> so two hotter ones, we just put in the whiskey. What are the other hot... What's in this one? You, didn't, you just got straight away. You just got chocolates. Um, it's good. Um, so, anyway, let me get started. I think enough people have joined us now with distracted you, you all for waiting for long enough. Um, so pre-sale starts the 26th of April, so next Friday uh, at 8 p.m. South Australian time. And it's gonna go until the 7th of May at midnight. Uh, the pre-sale price is $41.95, including GST, uh, and free shipping within Australia. So that shipping is actually included in that price. Mm -hmm and also discounted international shipping. So um, don't stress about international shipping. We know it's expensive, but we um, we do like a kind of a discounted rate for you to take advantage still. Uh, there is um, eight golden tickets to be found. Eight. Eight. Now, well, if you I don't know awesome. what golden tickets are, this is to join our amazing development team. If you're lucky enough to get one of these delicious bars of chocolate, 
that actually have a golden ticket invitation. You just opened that purely because you want to eat the I chocolate. I do want to eat it. <laughs> um, golden ticket invitation inside. This is to join our amazing development team, uh, which I can talk about later on once we uh, get into the questions and answers. Um, but there'll be eight of those. There will be a new dinners one and two bundle, an eight book healthy mix bundle, and a new 18 book complete collection, all with discounted rates, of course. And um, I will be signing the first 800 copies sold, and then another 500 <laughs> random copies throughout. <laughs> Is that a joke? <laughs> That's like 300 more than normal. <laughs> Sorry, Anne, you're killing me. I love how you just find that out now. <laughs> so I'll be signing a lot of books. <laughs> That's all right. Um, bonuses include a uh, recipe list download. So this is um, really good for meal planning. So covers all of our books um, with like an index guide and also a special budget <coughs> dinner guide, five dinners for $50, which is cool. So you can make um, five dinners for five nights, if that makes sense, <laughs> for 50 bucks. I don't know if that's clear. Five dinners. Or eat five dinners you in you one night. that really hard. I know. <laughs> um, and you also um, get a freezer preparation guide as well. So like how to um, start loading your freezer full of stuff to make cooking dinner a lot easier. Pre-sale books will start shipping in late May and you get your free digital copy immediately. So if you do take advantage of the pre-sale price during our um, pre-sale book launch you get your free digital copy like always so you can start cooking immediately and the ebook will be available from the 2nd of may onwards and it's 29.99 so if you only want a digital copy you have to wait until after pre-sale finishes so for all those anyway people. that's all the kind of rough things that i wanted to cover we've got a few little things to chat about with the book um i'll just rush through these so we can get on to the questions because that's really the part that we're here to enjoy. Um, there's 42 recipes in the book. There's only one that we're including from the blog this time, which is the vanilla ice cream. And we've updated it for the book anyway. So we actually included that as a last minute addition to the book because there's a Match. few desserts in yeah, the, the recipe. Yeah. Needs it. yeah. And the um, banana pudding, pudding yeah. as well. And yeah. Straight up it was roast kind of like a given. Everything else. Yeah. yeah. So we really wanted to make sure we had that ice cream included. Um, it's 80 pages, including the covers, so it's a beautiful sized book. Not too big, not too <coughs> small. It's just right. <laughs> um, That's it, not on the script. Don't I do the improv. It There's includes, no porridge in the book. <laughs> it includes oh, um, yeah. Thermomix and conventional instructions, but also we've got air fryer instructions, slow cooker, barbecue, all of those things included. Um, there's the new thing that we're doing in the books, which is the QR codes on every page. Mm -hmm. So we've got really helpful how-to videos and guides all throughout the book yeah. to just give visual, visual representations and further explanations on how to do things that maybe the written word is a little bit difficult to follow. Um, so we've actually been working really hard on filming that content over the last few weeks. They're all so. saying hi to your mum in the background there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Marty, come and, you can come and say hi you guys in a minute if you want um, just lots of lots of educational stuff included in the QR code so where to find things like extra information like specialty ingredients and stuff like that um, there is over 250 variations in this book to cater to all of the different dietary requirements I've actually got this here printed out to go through um, that's at the last count. I think there might even be more now. Yeah, I think we're still, like, Cyan and Brooke are like, can we? Could can we? <laughs> Surely you can make this X, Y, Z. Yeah. Come on, someone <laughs> test it. <laughs> um, we'll have spend and save, of course. So if you want to build your own bundles, you can um, take advantage of discounts. Um, what have we got here? No. Uh, we won't be doing People's Choice vote. Instead, we'll be doing a giveaway. The team is working hard to have all the recipe pages up. So... What we normally do is a people's choice vote where the community lets us know what recipe they want to cook immediately mm -hmm. and we release those ingredients ahead of time. We're actually going to release all of the ingredients ahead of time so that um, it's not just one recipe. If there's any recipe throughout the book that you want to cook on the first night, you'll have access to what those ingredients will be uh, in the next week. 
provided we get all the work done. We should take a bit of a pull on which one. I know. Be the I was sitting there thinking in my head, oh, I wonder if it'll be. The Marimia result is getting yeah. a bit of a workout, I reckon. I, I reckon. Absolutely. Um, the so, skinny tea starts tonight. So our amazing development team that I mentioned earlier. I am so like crazy. They're going to start sharing their content that they've been cooking over the last few months yeah. now. So congratulations to the dev team. They've been so excited about the skinny teas. The their photos, photos taking, and videos yes, are amazing. I know. Really Some quality. of the photos, I'm like, what? I know. I'm really excited. So be patient with them. Don't get frustrated by the skinny teas. Yeah. It's all part of the community. It's what we love to do. And, and they worked so hard. Oh, I was going like to say, no one knows. if we didn't have them, goodness, we'd... Yeah, it'd take longer to get a book out, yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, they're amazing. We love our development team. So celebrate with them. Give them love on their posts. If you see someone from the dev team post a Skinny Tees photo over the next week, just comment and tell them what a great job they did because these are just like... Did you see that? Yeah. Yes. It does. <laughs> do you know if you do a thumbs up, it does it now too? Oh. Yeah. It's full TikTok oh, it's now. Doing it. um, what I was going to say was... Um, your wings, it does a chicken. So these, these are... <laughs> These, Sorry. Um, these people are volunteers yeah. and they spend their hard earned money on developing, like testing these recipes that we write and um, giving feedback. And, Picking up all their mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they're just, they're, they're amazing people. And so they, they deserve as much love and attention for the books um, as what we do. Yeah. So please take the time to comment on their posts and tell them how much you love their photos or like hearing about what they've cooked for their families. Um, they deserve it. 100%. Anyway, a couple of little, just a quick one, just some specialty ingredients in this book. Now, Cyan gave me the number one rule for this book, which was make it easy, budget friendly, and only using the same ingredients in every recipe. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, so it's what? all chicken. No, that's so awesome. in this book, there's very few ingredients that you shouldn't already have in the house. Mm. Some that we do have that are new to the book are um, ground black pepper. So we haven't used ground black pepper before where it's like powder. So if you want to make the, bless you dad. If you want to make the, um, uh, pepper mayo. the pepper mayo, you need ground pepper, not cracked black pepper. Um, we've got fenugreek leaves in the sarg, but that's only optional. You don't have to use those. Yep. Uh, we've got goju jang paste and miso paste. I know that they were in the Asian, Asian book. Anyway, yeah. So, so, most people so hopefully you've them. still got some, but that's only for one recipe. It's not yep. like it's all throughout the book or anything yep. like that. Yeah. Um, and then there's cooking sake and mirin, which is also we use but those Coles. in Asia, but again, they're only in one, one recipe, I think. Yeah, and you can get them from Coles. Yeah. So. But yeah. the fenugreek leaves, just to go on that, we had to get them from like an Indian grocer. Yeah, Indian grocer, yeah. yeah. Um, but the, the but focus optional. of the Healthy Mix dinners too was make it super budget friendly. Yep. Make it so that it's meals that people can open up their pantry and go, I've got these ingredients, what can I cook for dinner tonight? See, I thought the brief was take down every single takeaway shop ever. <laughs> like one of the big <laughs> ones. The kernel's finished. <laughs> <laughs> no, it definitely was like quick, easy, budget yeah. friendly uh, and classics. We wanted to nail some classics that I grew up eating with and you guys grew up eating with. Yeah. And I think that we've absolutely nailed that with this book. Mm -hmm. So, without further ado, question time. we're going to start our questions. Now, the best question tonight that we can get through, we're going to try and breeze through them, uh, wins a Grandma's Pantry spice pack. Well, should we go now, through that? Now, Grandma's Pantry are uh, an amazing um, company. Oh They've Fun. been skinny mixers since very early on. And they have been helping us with spice packs since the oh, first yeah. book. Now, we are, we, um, what do I say about this? Oh, hi. Hi, 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 hi. <laughs> so everything you need to cook those recipes in the book. Yeah, so everything that you need to be able to cook the recipes many times over um, <laughs> come in these amazingly convenient packs. Now, why would you want to do this instead of going to Coles or Woolies? Yeah. Two real main reasons. Reason number one, you are going to save a fortune, an absolute fortune. You, these packs, like I don't know if you can see, hang on, I'll take something out. Um, for example, turmeric. They are the best, Sam. Eh? That there is a whole giant bag of turmeric instead of a tiny little jar. Um, so you're going to save money. 
but also you're going to be putting money into a small Australian family business, which yeah. is something we're really passionate about here at Steve Love Mixers. you, Janine. Thank you for always supporting It's so teams. important. It's so important we to do it. We just argue over this box. So. Yeah, yeah, we do. We do. So who's taking it? Um, and it <laughs> smells so good. Um, but please support Grandma's Pantry. Um, use your discount code. It's it? SK Mix. You get 10% off. This is not an affiliate thing. We don't... Um, it's not about us making money. We, we pass the discount on to you guys. It's just about being able to make it super convenient to cook all of the recipes and um, support an amazing Australian company. Crazy. And uh, let's get started. Yeah. My mum and my daughter are here. Do you want to say hi? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> we just always make it yeah, like more casual. The enthusiasm off camera doesn't match the no, on camera. No, no, no. They're just like so subdued. Hi. Hi. What I was going to say was the best question tonight as voted by us wins a grandma's pantry spice. Ooh, oh, wow. So get your questions through and we'll get started. So first up, we've got Eleni Antonio. I'm She's so excited that. about this book because I absolutely loved Dinner's One. I need to know the background around the Marry Me Chicken Risotto. Is this based on some kind of folklore or is it just that good you want to marry the chicken risotto? <laughs> Asking for a friend. That friend may or may not be a single me. <laughs> So Marry Me Chicken was um, a recipe that went viral, I think, during the whole CVD thing, which we won't say that word. Yeah. Um, it was like a TikTok Amazing. recipe that went viral. It's like a um, chicken cooked in like butter and tomato and sun-dried tomatoes and cream and yeah. spice um, herbs and stuff. And um, it looks delicious, but I thought instead of doing the same thing that every other blogger has done and come up with a marry me chicken recipe. Mum. Sorry. <laughs> this is real. But I'm trying to get my trains of thought out. It's very um, real. <laughs> Mum. Mum. Um, we thought we would turn it into a risotto. You're too wrong. <laughs> You're just louder than you think. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, and then, so... Uh, the idea behind it is that it's so good you will get proposed to. I've only had two proposals so far from the Marry Me Chicken Risotto, so I hope to get many more once this uh, book is launched. What did you say to them? Yes. You married both of them? That's why I've been watching Sister, Sister Wives. Wives. <laughs> yeah. it, what's the alternative to that? Sister Wives. Mr. Brother Husbands? Brother Husbands, yeah. yeah. Wow, right. <laughs> Oh, um, what's the difference in the ingredients? Colette, I was just wondering, with any recipe ingredients asking for cream in this next new dinner's tube, yeah. being I am lactose intolerant and suffer IBS, I'm having to only recently get all wheat and dairy products for some recent health issues. I'm trying to illuminate to get to the root of my food intolerances. I'm wondering if I'm able to use coconut cream, um, etc. So... This is the list of all the ones with all the bits. We have you covered. Because we extensively make sure that every single recipe in the book is gluten-free and dairy-free. So yeah. um, that's actually something that is really hard and I'm very proud of. Uh, Cyan and Brooke and us two working hard on the variations to make sure that literally every single recipe in the Healthy Mixed Dinners 2 is gluten-free, dairy-free. It's all nut-free. They're all egg-free. Um, every single oh, recipe know. except for one is low-carb, which I'm going to have to... I don't know how you can make that one not low-carb, though. What are we recipe yeah, developing on the fly? The banana. <laughs> What's that? The... Remove the banana. You can't, because then it wouldn't be banana pudding. Add something <laughs> else. <laughs> It's a delicious maple pudding. pudding. Um, every single recipe is, uh, or almost every single recipe except for the mango chicken curry is FODMAP friendly, which is another major one too. So I'm really proud of that. But to answer your question, you won't miss the dairy in these recipes. We work so hard on making sure that the dairy-free and the gluten-free variations are just as good as the main ones. In fact, these guys reckon that the low-carb, gluten-free version of the pumpkin. pumpkin dinner rolls, it's better than the gluten version of so the dinner rolls. rolls. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're more like a cheddar biscuit. Like, they're really yummy. Yeah, those cheddar bickies you get. That's what they taste 
Denise Hill, I love the vegetables list. Are there any hints on how to grow basil? Grant can answer this one because we had a chat about it this week. Basil. So we just planted basil. The first plant that went into your garden was basil. Are you aware of that? Yeah. It's the only plant that's in your garden. <laughs> um, but basil's a bit tricky because it tends to go to seed very quickly. And actually, I've got a good gardener, a horticulturist next to me. She can check this <laughs> off. So when you're trimming the basil, you take three fronds down, snip it off. Those two grow out. And when it heads again, you take three down and snip it again. And you create big, giant basil bushes all year round. Yeah. So right? that up. Pretty Grant close. and I are about to test it because we plant as a bush. In the, it's the only plant in the backyard now. <laughs> it's beautiful, though. It's a basil bush. It's actually still out there. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of it. We're going to go out tomorrow and it's just going to be this huge basil bush. Absolutely. Um, Carissa Jane Oxford. What are you and your kids' favourites from the new book is my question. Lines? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> you really like oh, that. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So tell them. Wait, can I? The I, liked, I liked what we had the other day. What was it? The one that the I got on Thursday. Yeah, that was this. Oh, oh the Arantini's? Yeah. Oh. I don't know so, what was the one today. We turned the Marry Me chicken risotto into arancini balls. Oh, and she... We call them divorce balls. Well, we're giving the instructions. <laughs> <laughs> it's after the Marry Me. Like, I just keep the balls. <laughs> divorce balls. Oh, my God. <laughs> Lani's like, oh. Good okay. things I can check out now. I've done my budget. La Lani oh, yeah. came home just after we made them and they were yet yeah, and she it. went she she texted me from the car at and said mum can you please bring out more of those balls and i was like no well, we couldn't because we were eating them but we ate them all we hey did. patty come say hi so her favorite um is the marry me chicken risotto done as arancini balls but i actually do think and the kids tenders. yeah they love the chicken tenders and they also really love the hot and spicy chicken burger and all the sauces that went with it they just got scoffed yeah Correct. What was that salad that we had the other day? What was in that? The oh, the Vietnamese. Oh, yeah, that was really good. Oh, yeah, yeah she loved the Vietnamese beef salad, yeah. Yeah, with that. That's from the other beef. book. No. What are yours? No, the new Vince's one. Favorite. No, the, no, that was no this is from this book. Oh, yeah. You, you were here for that, Miz. Yeah, I know. Should we have it right? Too many salads. Is there too much whiskey in this? Yeah. What's going on? You're fading out of screen. What are your favourites in your kids in the new book? Chelsea loves the rissoles. Yeah. Definitely, yep. And Chloe loves the zinger. Yeah, that's well, hot and spicy. That's what spicy. about your kids? Um, actually, they eat everything off it, and they've eaten everything. But because they're so Irish, you they need like... to text. Um, you need to text Mezzi's phone. I can't. So what we need to say is the col cannon because of, of the heritage. That is oh, the, my um, favourite. We don't call it col cannon. Rusted call it? cauliflower potato mash. That thing is crazy. For all the Irish people out there, get on it. It's better than grandma's. I would eat that Sorry, every grandma. night for dinner. Uh, Di White, what made you develop dinners to at this point in time compared to instead of a different theme book? How many dinner style recipes are still currently floating in your mind and didn't get developed for this book? Oh my goodness, at least 30. Yeah. yeah. Like we could write a whole third book yeah. off the back of what we didn't include in this book very easily. We just keep coming up with more and more ideas. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, she loves the blueberry crisp. Yeah. Um, we look. We were t contemplating what to do next and we decided to go with Dinners 2 because Dinners 1 was so popular and it seemed to make people's lives so much easier. Yeah. As soon as we released Dinners 1, people were already saying, when is Dinners 2 coming out? And I think now more than ever, I don't know about you guys, but in my house, I need things to be as easy as possible. Yeah. And I think that the Asian book, again, equally successful, but... It's got more challenging recipes in it that, not totally, there's obviously a lot of easy recipes in it, but there's also recipes that are more for weekends and stuff like that. I also still think that um, budgets like are just stretched yeah. to the end. More and, and more it's stretched. And continued and continued. We haven't seen the interest rates come down and things. So, yeah, I think part of this was what do we eat at home? What did we eat when we were kids? And then how do we get that into a book? Make yeah. it a little bit sort and of special. And also trying to be quite budget conscious and reutilizing those ingredients say from one recipe that we've done and reutilizing that in another like cabbage you know it's yeah trying to make so sure that there was ingredients in like multiple recipes and not used just once it was used all throughout the book and stuff like that so it's really like an evolution i would say from dinners one we really wanted to also cover 
a little bit more than just like dinner recipes. When we did dinners like one, things, people right? said, what about desserts? Yeah. Why aren't there any desserts in it? And I thought, well, people do have desserts for dinner. So we thought we'd just expand on the idea a little bit. Um, Simone Cooley. What's the difference between a souvlaki and a kebab and where does Euros fit into this? So, yeah, there's a souvlaki is in a kebab and a Euros is its own thing. That's pretty this much it. It's an ongoing also, conversation. Also, there's a number of conflicts happen in the world over this, so we don't want to get involved. Yeah. You yeah. can call it whatever you like, kebab. but I think because of um, Naka's heritage and stuff, it's kind of always going to be a, a Euros. Yeah. We call it a Euros. Souvlaki um, for me is on a stick. Yeah, what for, for me, like when I hear souvlaki, I think stick. And I think meat on a skewer. Yeah. And when I hear euros um, or kebab, I think of meat that's cooked on a rotisserie and shaved off. Yeah, but that's because, you know, because of your heritage. Being just a proper full blood Aussie, we just call it a gyro. It's, no, you don't. I don't call it a gyro. That's Sayan <laughs> calls it. <laughs> it's a euros. I always thought a gyro was the spinning thing. No, because yeah. Greeks pronounce a G as a Y. Anyway, I'm not going to have this Kill argument. Off. Kill off. Um, Kill off. Yeah. <laughs> Heather Ballard, is there a particular recipe that didn't make it into the final book that you really wished did and how many recipes didn't make the cut? Yeah, there's like a list of ones I wrote that just didn't make it at all. <laughs> um, there was a, oh, there was like an impossible God. pasta pie that I did. Oh, that yeah. oh I love like, that too, by the way. We're his kids loved it. it. Yeah. But it was like a... Mac and cheese bake. It was like a mac and cheese bake that had a lot of hidden vegetables so and art. stuff, but yeah. the feedback was hit and miss, yeah. so... Um, we decided not to include that one because we don't include anything that's hit and miss unless it's like getting rave reviews from the whole team or like more than 80% positive, we yeah. don't include it. So that was one that didn't make the cut. Um, Daniel Ma, there's always one recipe that may or may not make book. What's the most surprising or unexpected recipe that made it into Dinner's Two Cookbook and what's the backstory behind it? Uh, the one I think for me that was a surprise to eat was the mango chicken curry. So, like, I don't know if the idea of that to people is common, but to me it's not a common sort of dish that I would have. And it was surprised me how good that dish actually is. So mango chicken curry would be my pick. Char was good too. Hmm, that's a good question. I'm just looking. Um, and the creamy French pork. Do you know, I think that the... Um, do you know, the one that I actually think is the one that's the most surprising for me, believe it or not, was the um, the hot and spicy chicken burger fillets. Because that got two a things, lot. it's not exactly skinny. Like, it's much skinnier than getting KFC, but it's still, it's still chicken, like... Yes. You know, it's still a bit want, naughty. We just didn't want people to cook it and go, that's not a zinger. So we yeah. kind of had to do it justice. And we had, we did struggle with getting this perfect. Like oh, we yeah. made it probably 30 times, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. before we were back to the original. And Cyan and Brooke made it at least 10 times each. Like we wanted to make sure that the, um, the, like the, the coating stuck to the chicken, there was the right heat level, it had the it right crunchy. zing, it was crunchy, it wasn't too for those oily. Who, for those of you who have seen any of the lives, you would have seen that we were actually able to, well, you were convinced we'd bought one from... I actually thought you just yeah, bought, bought one. one. You were yeah. convinced of it. So that's yeah. how close we got, so we're pretty proud of that one. That's going to be a good one, and a big hit, I think. So for me, that one was like, definitely the most surprising and unexpected one, because first of all, I didn't think we were going to get it right. I thought it was just going to be a subpar version of a zinger fillet, and I thought that in the end we'd decide not to include it. And I'm so happy that we persisted Have with days and days of eating fried chicken. It's certainly key, though, that people don't... I, I want to mention this because I think if you don't, then it, they could have zingers that yeah. won't work, is you don't prep all the chicken all at once and then cook them. You coat... Then cook. And then eat one and then do another one, Miss. Yeah. Is that how you did it? Can't, yes. That's how we all did it. What are you talking about? <laughs> um, Pat Jauncey, what recipe did you think you wouldn't like, but turns out you actually love and you're glad you included it? Mango chicken. Yeah. yeah. Mango chicken curry every day of the week. Yeah, it's I, I, That's one of the most heavily requested recipes that we've had in Skinny Mixes since I started recipe developing. And I always avoided doing... Can you check your sign message? She hasn't. I always avoided um, developing a recipe for it because I thought it would be gross. And then Gra actually tackled the recipe for this one. And when I tried it, I was like, 
This is amazing. I'm always doing those weird fruits and chicken. Yeah. Was a banana one stuck in yeah, the duck do, and stuff? You do like your I weird do like fruits the weird and fruits. And that one's good because it doesn't matter if mangoes are not in season. As yes. Because well, you can no, use you can't eat my golden ticket. Ah. <laughs> what was that? What, was the, what did you say? What was that last one? Sorry. What? What recipe you used to love, yeah. but you actually love it? And I'm really glad we included it because it's delicious. You had, I thought the star was killer too. The yeah. Topic. I was not sure it was going to be like I have it every time. It needed to be perfect. It needed to be perfect because I eat it all the time. Times. Yeah. That was gorgeous too. That's amazing. That's um, amazing. Katie Williams, did you have any arguments <laughs> while recipe developing? No. And if yes, <laughs> how many and who argued with who the most? I'm going to let Mez take this one. Okay. So, best big. It was it's not arguments it's pretty key that I'm always the meat in the sandwich. These two <laughs> argue all the time. And then one will say, but I did that. And the other one will be like, I don't think so. Mez, what do you reckon happened? And so it's a constant thing. Literally, we every are day. very passionate um, <laughs> in the Skinny Mixers kitchen. <laughs> and yeah, exactly. Hey, yes. Justin, talk to you. That's so beautiful. <laughs> That's funny. There's always arguments. They're just passionate and very strong in their beliefs in how I think any creative people are correct generally yeah. very passionate people and what Grant doesn't realize is that I'm right <laughs> I was actually going to just say we don't have arguments you have a position and we agree and you just need to we agree, agree. that's the only way it works mm. I don't know where the confusion came that you've got an opinion yeah what we do is we give you the idea <laughs> we give you the idea and then you run with it uh, we congratulations quite, we've quite often said they should have their own reality show because um there'd be one season be and someone dies <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. it would be do you want to read this one out no Okay, <laughs> Samantha Cole Surgeon. I don't think I do. I, <laughs> love, I love cooking, but I like the kitchen to myself. I couldn't imagine being in a kitchen with others and not being cranky. I would like to know if a version of Grant's Nuts or perhaps Gourmet Balls will feature in this book. <laughs> We've got a hot dog. So it's like, there is, there is something in there, isn't there? That went kind of a bit funny, like Grant's Nuts? No. Uh, I thought there was. No. What reason they did something like that? My nuts. My my um buns overtook your nuts. Your buns have overtaken yeah, my nuts. Yeah, my, my Christmas, my Easter buns, my Easter hot cross buns. Oh yeah, but I had the maple butter in it to make it better. So just stop. <laughs> um, so oh, I I, <clears throat> I have two kitchens because I'm very very lucky. I've got a work kitchen out the back, and then I've got this kitchen which is um our family kitchen. We do filming in the family kitchen, but recipe development happens out the back. And I think that that separation between home and business is really important for me mm. and for the kids as well. Um, yeah, also... but to be fair, like you talked about that last question about arguments, and Mez is pretty particular about her space. Have you seen that little yeah, thing where she has the a little, She's like a little designated Everyone area. Everyone thinks that it's us, but she's the she, cranky she's, bee. She's like, I was working there. You're she's like, like oh, whatever, bro. You oh, took you over my... Right yeah. You what? Oh, your buns are great, Nick. <laughs> ah, that's Poor cringing. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> um, Hannah Bowes, what was the most challenging recipe to develop? Um, the hot and spicy chicken Yeah, chickens. we just wanted, because yeah. it was so the synonymous hot and spicy with like, chicken what filler. people know as perfect yeah. chicken. That was definitely the hardest to, to develop. And, um, oh, and then white chilli, that kind of had a few. Only one. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus. Look, this is where the Mango chicken starts. had a couple of goes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I had to fix that I one. You did not. Yeah, I did. I, I had to fix white chili chicken too. <laughs> um, Michelle Carton, how many of these recipes did you develop based on the recipe requests from the community? So there's quite a few actually. Um, yeah, the, yeah golden, the golden chicken curry. Yeah. Um, pasta. So that's the replacement for continental golden lamb sar. curry pasta. Yep, the lamb sar. The red hot heat for this book, for sure, is that um, next one. The mango chicken the curry gravy. was requested as well. Corned beef. Dumplings. Oh, yeah. Um, golden syrup dumplings. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, there's actually quite a lot. All the sauces. Requested. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Charged. Yep. The turbo um, charge, whatever it is. Uh, Tim gravy, Kavanagh. Right? Best recipe for mass making freezer stash. I reckon the white chili chicken person. Yeah. Oh, if, no, you, the, if you cook up the chicken as well for the meals. Meal. Oh, the meal prep. Yeah, meal, meal prep. prep. That's yeah. so good too. Haven't we yeah. got some in the freezer, maybe? Yeah, grab some. <laughs> Don't um, send off on missions gonna... like this. This is off script. I should be alright. I was like, wait. <laughs> Actually, there's. I wish you guys could see off camera what we're watching right now. This is. 
Jesus. What are you doing? <laughs> so just reach in and grab one thing. She just had to grab the whole freezer, guys. We're not actually going to eat any. We so we've got mango chicken curry. Chicken curry. What have we got? That's the Portuguese meal prep. Um, meal prep. Yeah. And I've got the white, white chili chicken. chicken. Um, so there's actually Ooh. lots. Of hay. Oh. She has to eat Are we now. keeping you up, John? Was <laughs> <laughs> that a yawn? Yes. Oh, sneeze, oh. yawn. Um, Tess, you, you would. Is yep. there any spice herbal condiment that he's used more than others? Do, do I need to bulk buy in readiness? Um, I think oregano, dried oregano is used heaps in this Yeah. Can I have this? Oregano? Nothing. There's lots of oregano. Dried oregano. Oregano is used um, all the time. Oregano. 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 Thank it's you, not bulk buying. I mean, garlic, onion, usual. Yeah, powders. Chop, yeah. chop, three seconds, speed nine. The most important, no. no powders. Powders. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the number one thing I think, though, Good is talk. have your chicken stock concentrate ready to mm -hmm. go and make beef stock concentrate. If you don't normally make beef stock concentrate and you want to give our gravy recipe a go, make sure you've got beef stock concentrate on hand. It will work with chicken, it's but so much it's better like beef. supreme with beef. So, Dad, <laughs> can you guys hear my dad in the background? Oh, yeah. He's like, oh. We've got a chew back over here. <laughs> 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 Someone asked before, what's the secret ingredient in the gravy? Oh, we can't tell. Can't, can't tell. tell. Sorry. Um, it's not gross. Uh-oh. Right. Mm. She said, do I need to buy in bulk? That's back to the grandma's pantry thing on the um, test you what question. Yeah. So Amanda Cutress, like, what was so the most... So just hurry this one. She's like, do I need to buy in bulk? Um, oh, yeah. That's the yeah. one we said grandma's pantry. Grandma's pantry. Get on top of them. There's so much in terms of spices. You'll be covered. Yeah. Like all of the recipes. Yep, at least several times over. Yep. You're doing um, five fifty. Amanda Cutress, what was the most challenging recipe to create due to being as cost effective as possible and incorporating yours, grants and measures ideas and cooking styles? That's yep. a hard one. Everyone should write. What was the hardest recipe to develop? Most challenging recipe because it needed to be cost effective. Ah, oh, well, anything with cabbage in. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly. I just ate one of my gold teeth for a piece of cabbage. That was ridiculous. We were like, why did cabbage just have to go up like 10 bucks? I think anything with meat actually was a challenge for us in this yeah. book, come to think of it. Like, we really wanted to avoid any kind of cuts of beef that were more premium. So we really focused on cooking more budget cuts of beef and lamb and pork. The other, you agree? I agree, and I think that was one of the challenges to kind of get all of the cuts so they could be kind yeah, of budget friendly, yeah. and then we could velvet them and treat them appropriately. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a good that's a good yeah. one. Yeah, I would say actually that's the most challenging thing was was actually working with proteins in this book and making sure that it was accessible to everybody. So we've got no real premium cuts of of any kind of meat in this book. It really is very budget conscious and friendly. Yeah, like when we were trying to develop the pork recipe, we kind of struggled with that a little bit. Can I just say? Uh, those people who are lucky enough to get one of these eight golden tickets, that chocolate is really delicious. <laughs> it's so good. Oh, it's it's really, I, know, I had to make sure it was good chocolate. <laughs> it's um, so worth it, Willy Wonka. It's going to be silly nonka. Yeah, no, it's very good chocolate. Oh, yeah. um, this one might be one for mum and dad. Tanya Marshall, would there be a dinner three in the foreseeable future made up of more of your mum and dad's recipes that you grew up with? The ones to date have been amazing. There's nothing like recipes that have been in the family for years. So we've got two recipes in this book that are from my family, which is my dad's lamb roast and my mum's sort of corned beef slash silver side um, that she would make growing up. Yeah. But there's so many recipes. Aren't there, mum and dad? They're dad's asleep. just like waving from the couch. They're both asleep. He won't come and say hi. How many dad. recipes? Nana's. You dad. Still, you still have some more recipes to go? No. <laughs> I think he's asleep. Like ink on your chest. No, it's old. Um, I just don't normally wear low cut stuff. Um, um, what recipe didn't make it? Vanessa. I've got ink on my chest. Um, we've already answered that one. Nicole. Sorry, just, are you kidding me? Just be funny. Just Nicole Hollyhouse. Always. Do you double. still get so nervous or anxious doing lives and on the day of release? We've seen how much you have grown and your confidence these days is amazing. Something you should be so proud of. Aww. What do you think, Lonnie? You're always nervous. I always get nervous, oh, yeah. Confident. And on the day of relief, she's like, I'm oh, fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. And we're like, she's <laughs> so not fine. Every time you see her appear on a camera, she looks like this. 
And when this comes off, it's like, uh, and the T-Rex arms come out. No, I'm just joking. She's, she does this so well. What am I wearing on my feet? Um, she's wearing little Ugg slippers. Yeah. Ugg boots. <laughs> I said I was going to get a picture in a Camilla dress with these little Ugg boots on it. Actually, you know what? We're going to eat one of the boots now. These are the worst. <laughs> now I'm going to be like lop footed. So while she looks fantastic with that hair and makeup and the outfit, that's on her feet. <laughs> <laughs> you got to keep things real. Just chuck it down. So glamorous. Can I have it? Yeah, of course. Because you're unlocked. Yeah, because I'm like uneven now. Now she's Eileen. <laughs> Eileen. Sorry, do people call Eileen? <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I do still get anxious and nervous, of course, um, particularly on book launch day because, you know, there's nothing more full on. No matter how many books you release, you're like literally putting your heart out for everyone. And there's, you know, it's not just me anymore. It's a whole company now. Like we've got Mez and Grant and yeah. Cyan and Brooklyn. The other thing too is I think you stick to this idea that you want it to be good, but you write things for a reason. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. you write them so you want people to love them. And until yeah. they love them, yeah, you get anxious and nervous. Yeah, yeah and when what... things don't work, it really does affect you. You interrupted me. I just sorry, I, I had a whole thing I was about to say. We thought you so... finished. It went no. for a long time. What I, I was really going to time. say before I was interrupted was... <laughs> that is the, the um, No, but it was important to me. Um, it's not just me anymore. There's, there's my children that I support and there's, you know, Mez and her family and Grant and his family and Stacey and... Um, niece and Cyan and Brooke and so there's a lot of pressure um, I'm sure you can imagine to make sure that things are successful and sustainable and that we can keep doing what we're doing um, and it's not about being the biggest and the best in the world um, it's just about making sure we can sustain it and that we're really proud of what we're producing but I still get so nervous because there's this idea that like what if no one buys it this time and um, you were literally just saying that the other day like I don't know if anyone's going to buy it. Yeah. But you just, I just get so yeah. nervous because I want to keep doing this forever. And, and you never know when it's not going to be the cool thing anymore. So I'm just going to keep going and hopefully people keep buying them and we get to all keep hanging out and writing recipes. They're fabulous yeah. recipes, so we're okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, do you want to read this one out, Grant? What is it? Why do you do that to me? I can't read that far. Yeah, We've can. already answered You that do one. it for me. No, that's a good one. Why don't you do that for me? No, you do it. What recipe is your kids' favourite so we know which recipe to try on our kids? They already answered that. We did that one before. No, but they want to know what one we recommend they cook first for their kids. Chicken oh. tenders. Chicken tenders. Chicken tenders. Chicken tenders. Tenders every day. Um, They're so easy to make, super delicious. We only Cheap. made them on Friday, and then I've actually got a video of Grant and he's like, oh, because <laughs> that was so tender. Did I know you were taking the video? <laughs> no. Um, if, your, if your kids are kids who will eat things like rissoles, the hidden veg rissoles in this book are phenomenal like they're actually out of this world you can't tell there's veg in them that and they're so delicious with the gravy and the mash is the best thing i've ever eaten it was oh, funny i was developing one recipe for you and they yeah. actually they, she just said yeah. they have vegetables i was gonna say i was doing one recipe and you're like no put another vegetable in you know no put another vegetable in. It's like that's a lot of vegetables I'll put another one in put more put, put all more vegetables, the vegetables. i think we got up to a count of like five or six vegetables yeah yeah it's so good um, Mel Isa, which recipe out of the whole book is the quickest gravy. and easiest to make, please? Um, gravy. Gravy. Well, they're not going to eat gravy, are they? I don't know. She, I nice. would. <laughs> yeah, I drink it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Gravy. I oh, think gravy. that the oh fastest recipe mm. might be the... Blueberry crisp? Either the mm. golden chicken curry pasta mm. or the penna arrabbiata. Which yeah, yeah, I fast. I yeah, Charmaine's fast. Coming super fast. Oh, the creamy French pork. I actually think that's the fastest main meal in the book. Well, let's set a challenge. <sighs> See you can the, the, the creamy <laughs> French pork. Um, we, yeah, actually, you guys should test that yeah. theory. Challenge um, accepted. You guys should test that theory. <laughs> Mel Preston Reed, which recipe do you suggest I make where either my kids or husband won't whinge about what's for tea? Just kidding. Love, they love lots of past recipes, oh, even if I have to take the chili out of some. Um, I uh, think science says it's probably rissoles. Oh, rissoles, yeah. Rissoles are fast. Mm -hmm. um, look, I think that um, the enchilada meatball bake you can't go wrong with. Um, it's very, very delicious. Uh, marry me chicken risotto. I'd be surprised if anyone complains about that. Um, I love that around. caviar salad as well. Yeah, the caviar salad is delicious. Um, gyros meat with, with a little salad. With the caviar you know, salad. You can't go wrong. It's perfect. Um, 
What else? There's so many good recipes. The family lasagna. Oh, the family lasagna, of course. Like oh, yeah. Now, the thing about this family lasagna, which is really good for fussy people, is that it's got, it's got loads of hidden veg in it. Um, there's hidden zucchini in the bechamel, and there's, I think, four different types of vegetables hidden in, in the, the meat sauce. sauce. Yep. So that's a winner for me. Um, no, no, Wendy. Where do you live, Wendy? Say that louder. Tell them. Tell them what you said. What do you just say that? Yeah. I'll buy you those shoes you want if you tell them. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going <laughs> to. No. Are they the corners? Tell them what you were going to say. Okay. I'm doing Jesus. another collection. You should tell them then. Um, would you actually? <laughs> Oh, yeah. uh, the lasagna is really good, and I don't like lasagna. It's, I don't it's like actually the, true. I don't like the stuff on top of it. It's Creamy, like, the yeah. bechamel. Yeah. But this one's really good. Yeah. yeah. So we'll take that as a win because yeah. neither of my kids will eat lasagna and they both eat this and lasagna. You guys don't like creamy stuff, do you? No. Nah. Um, Wendy Ackroyd, I would like to know if I can get someone to come in and cook one of each meal for me. Where do you, <laughs> you live, Wendy? Wendy? Where do you live? So, uh, where, 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 do you where do you live? Where do you live, Wendy? <laughs> <laughs> Tell us where you live. If you live in South Australia, we will cook something for you and deliver it. Yeah. How does that sound? Uh, so Alison, you know, now all those skinnies are regretting they didn't they ask did that question. That. <laughs> um, Alison Watt, which recipe excites you the most with its release? Ooh. Ooh. I, mash for me. Yeah, the mash. No, for no. me, it's the gravy. Yeah, the gravy's going to change change things. I was going to say, I don't know, there's some ones that people wouldn't have tried before that I like. I think, the rest, I think that gravy changes the game. It is a game changer. The, you wrote that one. The crew love that. But... Um, there's some things in there I don't think people would have tried before. I mean, don't you know? Pepper mayo? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Mine's moving the cyan. Pepper mayo? Pepper mayo. <laughs> yeah, of course, the pepper mayo. That's, yeah, I agree. Um, which one do you reckon? So, I think there's some other ones in there too. Like, I, the chaga one surprised me as well. Oh, yeah. That was um, a really surprise one, the chaga chicken. Oh, yeah, that's the weirdest We're making name, that tomorrow. Uh, Tuesday. We're going to yeah, make Tuesday it. Yeah, Tuesday when I'm not here. Mm -hmm. So, we'll go live with the chaga chicken. That's uh, a big question. Yes, this is for you. Who eats the most zingers? Cyan, do you want to chime in on this one? Does it for real taste <laughs> like zinger chicken? Yes. Yeah. It does. Better. It does. Better. Better. Even Chloe said that. My Chloe. <laughs> better. It's better. Um, so Cyan, we can see her typing away and she said in all capital letters, yes. It's like she's she's saying the, with Cyan. She's the... <laughs> <laughs> she's the two writing letters as we said again. with the, the pen yeah. and the <laughs> this no. is weird. Cyan, can you hear us? Are you in the room? Move your fingers on a glass. Um, Kate Pengilly, who gets final say on which recipes go in the book? Cyan. Cyan. She makes it seem like it's me, but it's not. No. It's no Cyan. way it's you. It's Cyan. <laughs> Cyan gets the final say. Yeah. Someone in Cyan's house. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica Traeger, cool last name. If you yeah. were asked by in the book, what would be the first thing you would cook? All right, so hands down, if I was saying you want to just be like, I spent the best <coughs> money of my life, it would be the mash, it would be the green beans, it would be the gravy, and it would be the rissoles. Yeah, followed by blueberry crisps. Followed by blueberry crisps. Crazy. Those five things, it sounds like a lot to cook in one night, but I promise you it's not. Those five things, you will be like culinary heaven. It's the yeah. best combination of... All yummy things ever invented. Dad! <laughs> he just burped. We think it was a burp. Dad, everyone can hear you. Yes, the internet like just a little you. Muppet in the background. <laughs> what would you say um, they should cook first, right? The penne arabiata. Penne arabiata? I love that. Arabiata. That dish is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. The penne arabiata. That dish is absolutely fabulous. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jody Young, I would like to know how hot will you go on the hot and spicy burger and marry me, what a name for a dish, why? Um, it's pretty, it's hot, it is spicy, like it is a zinger, so it is spicy, but it's not like... You can drop it down though. It, yeah. it, it, so I it takes some tricks to make it easier. Yeah, yeah, I made it for Chelsea the other day, he doesn't like spicy, so I just like... Yeah, so we've got instructions on how to make it just like a mild, more mild version of uh, zinger. Yeah, if the whole freaks out, they can go crazy. Uh, Elizabeth Miller, which recipe is the easiest to get on the table after a long day at work? Yeah, the penna arabiata. Yeah. That, so the penna arabiata, I'm really proud of this one. Um, it the uses... Indian curry mince is the... Oh, yeah, the Indian, Indian curry mince. That's what I was going to say, Sam. 
It's but super easy and delicious. But for me, the penna arrabbiata, because it's vegetarian for starters, so you don't actually need to go and buy any meat. Mm -hmm. It and just uses a passata, chili, garlic, olive oil, basil. Yeah, pretty much standard skinny mix uh, ingredients. Yeah, so you should actually be able to knock that one up with stuff that you've already got in the pantry. I'd be surprised if you had to actually go and buy anything to make yeah. it. It's very, very, very budget friendly, very quick and easy to make. But the curried, Indian curried mince is probably the second easiest thing to get on the table. It's like one of those chuck it all in and let it cook type things. Um, T. Westall, what is your favorite recipe out of the dinner's two recipes? Uh, I think we've covered that pretty heavily. Yeah, mine's a mash and blueberry crisp. Oh. Mine's blueberry crisp, blueberry just secretly. Crisp. Like Lani just said to me before, can you make it for me? Because yeah. these two have been eating it for breakfast. Yeah, we <laughs> eat it cold from breakfast from the fridge. I had a heroin the other day, late at night. I was doing toasties with the Euros meat. Ooh. Oh, wow. That's a super good idea. Yeah. I put a cheese, so it was a little bit on the old show. Yeah. The exercise. Yeah. But yeah, it was delicious. So the Euros meat one. Um, ja Diane Jacoby, what inspired you to write dinners to and decide what recipes to include? Um, you know, we just really felt the community needed it. Yeah, we just really felt that like, like everyone else, we, if we're struggling with what to feed our families and, and budgets and all of that sort of stuff, and it's a big one for me is like lack of energy, so things being much more easier to get on the dinner, t dinner table. Yeah, speed was a big then thing. Then everyone else is going to be sort of feeling the same way. Um, in terms of how we decide what the recipes go into the book, we asked the community this time, and that was a big one. We asked the recipe development team. Yeah. So yeah. if you're wondering what one of the major perks of being on the dev team are, Influence. it's because you get really a significant influence in what goes actually in the book. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great way to get your favorite recipes mm -hmm. written by me. Also us as a team, we have like a ongoing list yeah. where we post. Yeah, we have like recipes. a living list basically that we just come up with ideas and post it to it. And some of them are great and some of them might never see the light of day. No. But <laughs> we'll see. Um, Heather Gerard, how many of the recipes have wash bowl before doing the next step? Um, Not many, if any, as the song goes. I would say almost every single recipe. You just leave it dirty. You don't need to clean the bowl. I think there's maybe only one where you where we tell you to rinse it. Yeah, I don't think there's anything. And that's the bechamel. So yep. there's only one recipe where you have to rinse the bowl, and that's when you make. Oh, without. Was it meant to say without? Yeah, without so washing the bowl. Yeah. yeah, without. She just added with. That's what she means, though. So oh. what you do if you didn't have to wash? No, them? I get it. Yeah. yeah. So just the lasagna. Yeah. Um, only if you want your bechamel to be perfectly white. Yeah. Um, you've got to just give the bowl a bit of a rinse out before you make the bechamel. But you don't actually have to clean it. You just got to make sure there's no like meat chunks. It's in one it. of the benefits of us developing the recipes because um, we're really lazy. Uh, Mel Johnson, what's the next book going to be? <laughs> what's the what? It's like asking what, what you're having when, you, you, when you're having your next baby while you're still pregnant. If you DM me, I'll tell you. Yeah. No, you won't. You know I will. I do it all the time. We, uh, anyone who's ever been telling me It's actually before? surprising that we already know what the... Normally, we don't even know at this I'm point. I'm just not sure how a Skinny. pet recipe book's going to go. It doesn't a make a lot of sense. Book. Did you miss that? Yep. I don't know how a pet recipe book's going to go. It's just weird. <laughs> um, Michelle, April Fools. Michelle Amanda, what is the best, funniest <laughs> fail you've had in the kitchen? That's a good one. What's that, sorry? What's the what? No, was it the most? No, when she smashes things. But probably when Mez drops stuff is hilarious. Yeah, the oil. I was actually the oil, about to the say that. The Mez drops things a lot, but it's always really funny. The fridge being on board. The fridge being on That is never me. <laughs> the non-PC conversations. Um, I wouldn't say we have too many fails actually in the kitchen. Yeah. The fail was last week the, the fridge being off all over Easter and there being like five batches of stock. That in wasn't there. funny. That, that was I depressing. literally cried. Yeah, that was depressing. That was, yeah, that was really sad. Is probably the Well, word. I had to plug my charger in. Like, yeah. I don't know what the big deal is. Good one, Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Michelle Lupino, do you use vinegar to adjust your flavours if the taste isn't quite right? It's an old trick my mum taught me. Um, I've never needed to, to be honest, but... Um, We've adjusted salt. And yeah, we sort of just adjust um, what we need to. Sweetness, uh, like balance of yeah. sweet, Lemon sour. always makes an appearance. Yeah. Yeah, lemon's um, really key. Lemon's it depends on the dish as well, really, isn't it? Uh, Catherine O'Dwyer, not a question, just a big thank you for creating another amazing book with more ideas for dinner. One thing I hate asking, what do you want for dinner? Answer, not fussed. Now I'm not asking. How do you do a heart emoji with your hands? You ready? Go. And it'll do it. We love you. Where is it? What is it? it picked it up. There it is. 
Oh, that's a cool picture. Um, Emily Parker, how do you make amazing recipes that taste like a restaurant yet still make my butt shrink? We're magic. <laughs> we we really actually balance um, the fine line between flavour and calories. And I think that after 10 years of recipe development, that's something that's kind of like second nature to me. Yeah. And it's something that you picked up Straight away. extremely quickly. Yeah, exactly. Um, you can still get a lot of flavour without adding excessive amounts of butter and oil and salt and sugar yeah. like they do in restaurants. And I think that that's what Skinny Mixers is really good at. We rely a lot on flavours like from our stock concentrate is really important. That's the king. If yeah. you're not using stock concentrate in you're your recipes, out. you are robbing yourself of enjoying your food Agreed. as much as you could. Definitely. Yeah. Not only does it make the food so much healthier, but it makes it taste so much better. Yeah. And, and um, it takes up all that wastage as well. It's the best thing ever. Yeah, it's the best. Yeah. And then also a lot of dry spices and things like that. Like a lot of people ask, why do you use onion powder and garlic powder? It's got a lot more flavour. Mm -hmm. So actually, um, sometimes I'll even still use onion or garlic powder, even if I have used the fresh ingredients yeah. in the recipe. So, yes. Um, Kath Wills, what would be your favourite meal from this cookbook you could eat for a week and still be happy to see it? That one I know the answer to immediately. It's the white chili chicken because it's so versatile. You can put it on nachos. You can make it as a soup. Pies. You can put it on jacket potatoes. You can turn it into pies. Mm. You can have it as a um, burrito bowl. You yeah. can turn it into enchiladas. What else? I'm like, I'm on a roll here. I hope you're writing all these down, Cyan. Yeah. <laughs> Bam! Um, toasties. Tacos. Um, tacos. Tacos, beautiful. Um, yes. No, probably not a year What's the other one? Um, that's probably it. I've probably extended the... <laughs> I feel like we're going on the... You could put it... You could make like a Mexican shakshuka yeah. with baked yeah. eggs in it. That would be delicious. Like in a pan with nice. baked eggs. Yeah. Yeah. Roll. Look at all that. That's well, not And you can turn it into like a soup, but not... I said that. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I said that. That was my <laughs> third one. Let her have a little... still back at that. I'm <laughs> at. <laughs> um, did you have something to chocolate? Did you finish it? No, it's the sugar kicking in. Donna Harper, in your next book, can you please name some of the recipes? I don't care, whatever, whatever you want. Oh. I can't, sorry. It would give things away too much. No, you could be what do you vague. Mean? No, I can't. No. I can. No, no. Puppy food. <laughs> <laughs> Pagan Tatnell, who Wait. eats all the practice food? <laughs> Asking for that? a friend. Also, I volunteer as a tribute. <laughs> now, <laughs> we... Because we've got um, a team that work here now, so we've got me, Mez, Grant, Stacey, Neeson. Who else? Me, Mez, Grant, Stacey, and Neeson. Mm -hmm. Plus, Lani and Pat come home from school. Yeah. Um, if I really love what we've produced and I think the kids will eat it, I keep it and we serve up just th a portion of three for me and the kids, and then the rest the gets packed up, yeah. and it gets shared to whoever we think has worked the hardest the day, and I don't know if Mez has worked that out. <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm 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 kidding, i Who's not? Who's going out for dinner? Who's got like yeah. sports? Okay, who needs it the most? Or like, to be honest, Mez you doesn't realise do this, <laughs> but when she, I can see that she's had a particularly hard day, and I know that maybe her hubby's not home or whatever, I'll always send the food home with Mez because I can always order Uber Eats and not feel guilty. But um, she has a husband to answer to. <laughs> well, that's right. it's true, and because in my house it's on rotation all the time anyway, so it's always freshly and, cooked. And you guys are always yeah, it's cooking, always cooking. So, so I cook yeah. every day, you know, at home. It's always cool. And then, if at the end of the week there's anything left over, my little sister Steph, I she love her. It. She's the garbage guts. And my chickens get all the Don't like off cuts. Yeah, her chickens get any kind of like scraps. Yeah. So there's actually way less waste in the skinny mixer's kitchen than ever before. My chickens yes. are so hungry, man. Oh, Sorry. and we do team lunch as well. So oh, yeah, we do. if we cook anything in the morning, we'll sit down at midday as a whole team and eat lunch together, which is a really nice thing. Yeah, I yeah. think it's like. 
We've bonded. Yeah, yeah, we've we've bonded. Finally, <laughs> after <laughs> four years, we've bonded. There's family bonding. Um, I'd say what well, we should release a podcast of those conversations. Oh, no. Mm. Tammy Wilford, which recipe can I get my thermo virgin hubby to make for me? I think the penna arrabbiata. Yeah, good idea. He, he won't be able to muck that up. Mm -mm. Or the risotto, because of course risotto is one of the most popular things to make in the thermo mix. Um, so I don't think he can go wrong with that one either. And. He's already your husband, so you don't have to deal with a marriage proposal. No. <laughs> uh, Lisa Ann Sylvester. If on a budget, which recipes are budget busters? So, the cheapest recipe in the book is the penne arrabbiata. It comes out to six dollars ninety-three um, total, like total cost. Well, no. Yeah. The total four letters. Yeah. And the people have out. I didn't know that. It's like crazy cheap. It's super cheap. Oh, that's not. Risos. That's not per serve. No, that's, that's total. total. That's yeah. total. Yeah. What? Um, Wasn't tortilla soup that cheap? That thing's fantastic. Per, no, that can't be per serve, can it? No, that'd be in oh, well, cheapest item. item excluding tomatoes. Yeah, that's everything. And, oh. That's the full hit. Yeah. Wow. That's um, excluding dried herbs. Rissoles hey, you notice how we looked at that that we didn't write that list? Yes, yeah. Cyan. Cyan. Cyan does all the hard work for us. Oh, um, the okay. rissoles would be the next away. cheapest thing. Yeah. Um, and the gold. But they're not just rissoles. It's what you do with it, though. Oh, uh, Brooke did that. <laughs> Perfect. We, we love you, Brooke. <laughs> Brooke's always the one with her amazing, like, she does these amazing spreadsheets and she does like um, cost breakdowns for all the recipes and stuff like that. She's just a phenomenal person. Brooke is just such an asset to, to everybody oh, yeah. in the shitty mix spreadsheet. Everything. What you guys don't realise is like a lot of the stuff that you enjoy that's like extra things is because Brooke has like created some sort of macro or spreadsheet or something for it. Um, is that personal the, the golden parry. The is golden... that personal like that? Her spreadsheets and stuff? Yeah. Oh, that's why I haven't seen them. The golden um, curry pasta is only $8.34. So another super budget friendly thing. You cannot buy enough packets to feed your family and save that much, like, and it costs that little. So. It is a super budget friendly book, this one. Probably yeah. the best so far. Leonie Potter, during development, did you have any epic fails? Did those recipes get reinvented and make the chart cut? Or were they out for good? The, uh, the lamb sarg. The first time I made the lamb sarg, that was disgusting. Oh, I remember the, the pork. The creamy French pork. Yeah. That was... Sacre bleu. <laughs> it was not... That was so bad. You made it like four times. Do you remember? You kept telling me to make it. I made it once. We can't make it anymore. He made it like four times. Yeah, we could have And then it. I was like, this is just not going right. That was the worst. And then everyone left for the day. And I was like... I'm going to do yeah. this. I, I'm going to figure this out. And I went and got all the ingredients and made it and all by myself and nailed it. That was bad though. So do you remember how bad that was? Yeah, that was, was, that was bad. Do you remember you even I'm did that because I don't eat pork? I tried to do it and it was basically <laughs> like a soup of some sort. It was horrific. Yeah. It was the it worst. Control, it's delicious. But now it's not the same recipe anymore. I actually came up with a totally different yeah. idea. Um... Heather Northcote okay. Carol, was there any recipes that you couldn't get right so you couldn't include at this time but we'll continue to work on? I think the mac and cheese... Um, the impossible pie. The mac and cheese bake because I think yep. that like it's got so much hidden veg in it. No, I'm good. So much hidden veg in it and it's so delicious and who doesn't love mac and cheese? Um, but I just couldn't get it right and I didn't think it... I actually didn't really think it fit into the book um, and there was already a few pasta dishes in it, so yeah. Anyway, um, oh, these oh. are just flavored waters. Yeah, this is from Jane Shop, Born Dry mm -hmm. product um, placement. It's actually it's not not, not sponsored. They're just non-alcoholic flavored waters with natural flavoring. Mine's got alcohol. Um, it's very delicious. <laughs> I don't want to drink it because you're getting sick. Um, Sarah Matheson, what is it about a recipe or meal that makes you want to recreate it for the Thermomix and Ski Mixes community? Nostalgia for me. Uh, nostalgia is a big one, yeah. yeah. Um, flavour. I just, I yeah. know what the community likes. Um, like if we're up to lunch or something, you're like, I'm, I'm I've got to do that. I've got to, I'm yeah. taking a photo of this, what yeah. you reckon those flavours are, and yeah, for you sure. take notes for sure. Uh, Naomi App Apple Tour. Which recipe caused the most divide or controversy within the de development team and testing team? Oh, oh. Where's the list? Yeah, it's right here. 
I didn't even watch it. Chicken was a bit confusing before we fixed it. Um. No, I know that grey salmon, grey oh, salmon, grey oh, salmon always causes the divide because of salmon. I know the dumplings. There was a lot of recooking of those to get them right. Yeah, the the yeah. Um, maple syrup yeah. banana bread dumplings. We yeah. had to perfect it, and we had so many. This book was just like really not problematic. It's a dream. Yeah, no, like there wasn't a lot that was like really difficult. Probably the chow mein as well. Like people getting the like trying to understand exactly um, what it is, and what it was, says. and how it should. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's an interesting one. I think probably chow mein is a good one because people wanted it to be sort of amped up and something wanted it to be subtle. Mel and, Adams. And I, I think when we talk about the testing team as well, um, when they give us feedback, it's not like we appreciate that feedback. Yeah. It, even if it is a negative feedback. Yeah, you're not trying to make it negative. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, okay, cool, it's it's salty. So there's quite six people that's found it salty. So we really should address that. So. It's not a, a oh, negative yeah. or a controversial thing, I guess. No. Yeah, we don't think of it as hostile. No, sure. no. Um, Mel Adams, have you ever stuffed up a meal that bad that your family refused to eat it? Of course. Yeah. All the time. Or anything with capsicum. She's like, <laughs> all the time. Patricia Summerall, what's the biggest fail in testing the recipes? Uh, none of them. Not now. No, we're pretty good. <laughs> we're pretty good. <laughs> Julie Hakes, which meals bring back the best memories for you? Or for me, it's the lamb. Rosani. Oh, the, the lamb roast. The lamb roast. Yeah, that roast. my dad would make, um, my dad, like, we had um, six kids in our family, so um, Sunday roast was not a thing that we did or could afford. Like, that just wasn't a regular thing. But mm. um, one of my favourite things would be when dad would surprise us with a lamb roast and, like, I'll let you guys read the blurb, but the truth of it is, is that I'm my dad's favourite daughter. <laughs> and so... Shit. Even he loved. Even so he loved. My dad... I like him up in the background. My dad... Marnie, do you want to find out who favorite, his favourite really is? It's Go me. On. Everybody in the family knows that it's me. So my dad would always save the best bit of... The, like, the bit of the lamb that I liked the most that for me. skin? Uh, no, it's like the bit near the shank. Oh, so, yeah. I think for, for me as well, I think for all of us, those memories... Like when you do the lamb roast, it was done in the backyard in the weather or however it was cooked. That is super nostalgic for me. So even your dad coming up and talking me through his recipe, it was kind of one of those things that brought back all those Everyone backyard memories. Everyone but he did used to leave you the best part of the lamb. Yes! <laughs> See? I told you. Did you guys hear no, that? No, he said everyone was the same. No. What did he say? Everyone's the same, but he did leave the best part of the lamb for her. Because I'm his favourite. <laughs> That's right. I know it. He told me one time. <laughs> Sorry, it's fine. Nice. It's fine. I know I'm the favourite. Um, I'm not my mum's favourite. No. Who's your mum's favourite? Me, Stephanie. No. Really? Who's your favourite mum? I don't have favourites. Bye. Uh, that's not what you said the other day. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kim Payne, I'm curious about how long it takes to perfect a recipe. Which recipe took you the longest to perfect, and how many goes did it take to get it right? Eight thousand chili chicken. <sighs> No, the... on a good day, it's once. first up, yeah. it's perfected. Just once off. And on a bad day, it would be like the pork. Yeah, like yeah, where... The goggy was a fast one too. Yeah. That hit quick. The majority of the recipes only take one or two, two goes. There's very rarely... Um... Come, that that pepper, mayo, pepper mayo took a long time. They want Papa to come and say hi. Oh, come and say hi, Dad. Yeah, pepper mayo. This is my dad. I'm his favourite. Can favorite. Dad come and say hi? Yeah. I never signed up for this. <laughs> but he's dressed for everybody. Thank you, Daddy. Bye. <laughs> um, so, uh, Bundy Bear, I'd like to say a massive thank Bundy you for the game. Bundy Bear, Bundy Bear. Bear. Queensland. Holy God. I can um, go on Bundy right now. I'd like to say a massive thank you for yet another awesome book for the collection. On a scale of 1 to 10, how hot is the supercharged sauce hot following the recipe? Be. It's not. It's um, actually not very spicy at all. Uh, I've got some in the fridge. It's like a, I've got some in the fridge. I'll let Lana taste right. it and she can tell. Yeah, it's. You can amp it if you want to as I well, which is good. Spice it down. Bit, you can tone it down, so kind of based on. Maybe a little bit of hit and miss. See, my favourite sauce is the one that's Where with the it? tenders. You ate it. It's in the bottle, isn't it? It's in the bottle in the fridge. Just squeeze it. Is it out there? Entertain it, please, guys. So, Hi, guys. It's me, Marnie. Marnie, just the mean girl's quotes. 
Uh, uh, so yeah, what we were saying. So no, yeah, in the chicken tenders, there's a, a sauce. Oh, yeah. I've forgotten the name of. What do we super call the chicken? Ten no, it's not oh, super. Charged. It's just special sauce. Special, special sauce. sauce. I and that's just one that Nick came up with just randomly. You were like, I need a sauce, and that's. I like that better than the supercharged or the pepper mayo, and that's a big call. I like the pepper mayo. I think my favourite is the pepper mayo followed by the supercharged followed by the tender sauce. Really? Hi, Lani. Yeah. Hello. Oh. All right. It's not spicy. Here you go. All right. Lani's gonna taste test it, guys. And I'm um, have good spices. Lani, open up. How you gonna get her a spoon? No, they're going straight, straight in. in. No. Where'd Dad go? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> you haven't seen people put hot sauce on their nose? All right, Lani, tell them mm. how hot it is. Do you want to try as well, Pat? What is it? Grab a spoon. What is it? It's a little hot sauce. Sauce. Do you want to grab a spoon? It's not really hot, it's more so like smoky. Smoky? Yeah, chipotle, yeah. Yeah. beautiful. It's good. It's good, you like Super it? Super good, I love it too. That's the tenders one I love. Oof. You just have a little bit more. That's it. Uh, see, um, Steve and Lisa said they're with me on the tenders sauce. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is, it is good. Um, so I would probably say, what, it's maybe a three in just spice? Just a bit. I don't know because I don't want it to be bigger. All right. Do you want to come over here and try it? Uh, they want to see you Natalie, try it. Natalie, yeah, Natalie Richards, it. what celebrity would you yeah, like okay. to try your food? I don't know because it... Can we try it here? Try it here? Pat's just trying that sauce. Celebrity. Huh? What did you say, sorry? What was the question again? Pat's just trying this for a sec. Ready? Give it a go. Kim Kardashian. What was the question, sorry? I don't, I don't think know. Kim Kardashian is a celebrity, celebrity or a celebrity chef, was it? What was it, sorry, miss? I don't know. What celebrity, what celebrity would you like Gordon to try Ramsey. your food? Mm. Gordon what Gordon celebrity? celebrity? Hang on, who would I serve the marry me chicken risotto to? Gordon Ramsay. Oh. Nigella. Michael Bublé. This her favourite. I'd marry Nigella. <laughs> <laughs> Channel is just becoming. Seven sorry, eight, kids. Nine out of ten. In spice? Yeah, no. Heat. Uh, what do you think about general, heat? Like, Is there any heat? Oh, what, how hot would you say? Two. A two? Two. So the supercharged sauce not um, is not hot. But it's turbocharged, by the way, just so you know. What about, what about um, who... The, who just hosted Saturday Night Live? Who just hosted Saturday Night Live? Maynard. Maynard. No, I'm not cooking. No, I wouldn't want to. No, that would what be terrible. <laughs> Michael Bublé. <Boobie. laughs> Science. 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 <laughs> He would just be a judgment I'm with Rudy Bob. Yeah. Oh, I don't like it. <laughs> um, Michael Bublé. Erin Kate, which recipe was your least favourite in the development stage and has become a favourite for the team? Personally looking forward to the rissoles, which I disliked as a kid. Um, Pat. Well, I'll pop the camera now. Because you're sick. Is that a sniffy, yeah. thing? Uh, um, that's a really good question. Probably the corned beef. Yeah. Yeah, corned beef. I really disliked corned beef as a kid um, growing up, even fan. though it was my mum's recipe. And I love the um, the horseradish cream. Yeah, the horseradish um, yeah. cream. <laughs> love us. What are you? Uh, Carissa Robins. Jane Oxford. What are you and your you and your kids' favourite from the new book? What are Grant and Mezzy's favourite from the new book? I think we've covered that pretty much. Yeah, yep. we have. Yeah. Janine Wright, please give us, a, give us a list of the first three recipes you would cook from the book. Well, we've already done that. Do the mash, do the rissoles, and do the gravy. And the, the blueberry crisp. Well, that, uh, she said three. Oh. <laughs> but, yeah, but you know, you've got to have dessert. Uh, Peter <laughs> Henny, what is the quickest main meal recipe to prepare? I, don't know. I think it's either the Indian oh, curry see. or the penna arrabbiata. Yeah. Uh, Michelle Lupino, was making the recipes as much fun as it looked on your promotional reels as it looked like you were having a ball? Yeah, we yeah. always have fun. Every day is yeah. silly. Yeah. Every day is silly. Um, um, always silly. And just on that, actually, if you guys haven't checked it out, over on um, Instagram and on Facebook, we now have a cool dude working for the team called Neeson. Yeah, he can't yeah. Yeah. Neeson. So more just and more. Neeson. It's just Neese, actually. Um, his name is Neese. Uh, Neese has joined the team as someone who comes in um, three or four days a week and he films um, he films what we're cooking and he shirt. puts through um, really awesome videos showing the recipes, showing making the recipes and stuff like that because um, 
it's so difficult to do all of the things yeah. all of the time. Our brains are so busy, it's just, yeah. we never remember to you know, capture and he's, and he's able to capture when we are being silly. Yeah, so um, there's lots of really cool video content coming. Like yeah. eating on camera. Yeah, no eating on camera. There's going to be some crazy stuff. Um, but we're loving having Nice as part of the team. And if you haven't checked out the promotional videos yeah, that we've been crazy, putting up, go check them out. Super high quality. They're really good. They are really, really good. good. I like them. Uh, what? Bless you. Bless you, Dad. Bless you. Fiona Bennett, what is the most complicated time-consuming dish? Um, probably the pumpkin dinner rolls, just because you have to prove them. Yeah. Um, there really is no difficult recipes no, in this book. Easy. Lasagna, of course, it requires a little bit of like, um, multi-step <laughs> prepping. I know. Yeah, yeah, because you have to make that. a meat sauce and then a white sauce and then you have to layer it. But you can do that ahead of time and then bake it when you're ready to to eat it. Yeah, nothing's um, difficult. Um, of course, like slow cooker clean oh, yeah. beef, um, you, you need to slow cook it in a slow cooker or whatever. But low so, effort. Yeah, but it's low effort, high reward. <laughs> <laughs> <What the heck? laughs> Alana Young, what was the first thing you like to do after you release? I can answer this not one. not include cooking. I can answer this one. Tell me if I'm right or wrong. Sleep. Sleep. Mm, get on a plane. Get on a plane. <laughs> I was going to say travel. But then you sleep. No, um, travel for sure. Look, to be honest, probably um, check in with uh, Cyan because she has the most stressful um, post release job as far as like book launch and book launches, yeah. like post book launch. So yeah. I like to check in with Cyan, Managing make sure that she's stuff. going all right, yeah. um, because it can be it can be quite stressful. And um, I just pretty much like to then sit on Facebook twenty four seven checking out all of the photos of what you guys have cooked and whether you're liking it, reading your feedback, answering questions, helping people. Pretty much that's what I spend the following month at least what after you, a book What about launch. you, Mez? What are you doing to the book launches? Um, I rearrange the whole prop cupboard because it's normally <laughs> a nightmare and just clean up like a yeah. giant clean Get up. ready for the next book. Yeah. i got to read it. stock. <laughs> Um, stop, Danielle stop. Glazard, will there be any recipes from Dinners 2 for free or shared on the website? Um, well, Cyan suggested that we might give away the pepper mayo recipe for free. So if you're interested in a sneak preview of maybe. the pepper... She's maybe. Saying. Maybe. <laughs> too maybe. late now. Maybe. Also, no, no, no. What I was going to say was if you're interested... Put a comment in this live video, let us know, and I might be able to convince her that we give it away ahead of time for people to get ready for book launch. Yeah. Um, so let me know if you want the pepper mayo recipe ahead of time. And there was something Grant and I were going to work on this week. What is as it? As well. Yeah. They can hear you know. You're whispering like really loudly. Raps. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, why are you whispering so loudly? Because we like to surprise people. I don't care. I'm um, telling you how it is. And remember, if you need Bianca, an answer, DM me. Bianca Rothwell, do we need to deep fry the zinger fillets? No. So no. Um, you don't have to deep fry them. Of course, like deep frying makes them the best. Um, because what's not better deep fried? Air but you can deep. air fry them. Yeah. You can um, oven bake them. Yeah. I believe. Yeah. But they obviously won't be as oily. Yeah. Uh, Amy Ridden, what was your inspiration going into Dinners Two? What were you hoping to achieve, and how do you feel you achieved it? Um, the main main thing was making sure that it was very simple, straightforward recipes with very basic ingredients that were used multiple times throughout the book so that if you went to the shops and bought ingredients, yeah. you wouldn't just be using them for one recipe. You might be able to use it across a few days to save money. Um, and, of course, more than ever, like, things just being delicious. Yeah, I think it's that's the big one. The kids want to eat it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's probably the big Sarah Carrick, are your children involved in the recipe creation process? Yes. Yeah. We tell her if it's horrible or not. <laughs> Yeah. They're the, the, most, funny, the biggest very critics. harsh. I think, yeah. it, I think that's one of the luxuries. We all have kids, and so they all get involved. I know that for me, Archie and Henry and Gracie <laughs> tend to give me a lot of feedback. Thanks. Thanks, Mum. As I was saying, so your kids give a lot of feedback too, Yeah, right? yeah. 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 We yep. send videos to each other of yeah. like the kids well, eating the yeah. yes. yeah. So I do video reviews, and we post them to the dev group to let them know yeah. whether it's good or bad. So yeah, yeah. 100%. Uh, 9.9999. 
Tina Morgan, better. since we all enjoy different flavours and meals, is there a recipe you couldn't all agree on? Including because you don't all love it. No. Uh, no. What did you hate, Bess? You want to say it? It's something she doesn't like. No. Now's no. the time, Bess. I was, out. I was overcritical on the dumplings. Just yeah. because. But that's because you've got an idea in your head of what yeah. golden syrup dumplings are. Yeah. And these aren't golden syrup no. dumplings. No, because it's in the healthy mix. And we don't want to give people diabetes or I grew, worse. I grew up with dumplings, so um, yeah, I'm over critical on the dumplings. Yeah, that's true. Well, I consulted my mum and she said it's okay, so you're going to be all right. <laughs> and mail. We are on a meal prep journey. Will there be recipes to suit? Yes. There's so many recipes that work before. for meal prep, but the mm -hmm. number one thing is the Portuguese meal prep dinner. Yeah. Um, so this is a ripoff of Nando's. <laughs> it's, um, it's a marinated chicken breast fillets with a, a f ultra flavorful rice yeah. and lots of veg that get cooked up, um, all individually portioned, and you get seven meals out of it. And they're actually really generously portioned. Mm -hmm. When I'm oh. talking, whoa! Oh. 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 What? Mr. Oh. Fancy Pants behind us! What did you do? What did you do? What did you do? I don't know, but that was fun. <laughs> that was really cool. I want to do it again. Lani did it. Lani did it on the other front. That was amazing. What? <laughs> I felt like we were just like, Monopoly. <laughs> oh. No, I don't know what we did. Maybe because I went like that. I was going to say, on that Portuguese chicken, I know that the, the what do you call it? Not the, what do you call it? The, what's the one called in the chicken? Burger one? It's the hot and spicy burger. The hot and spicy burger. Because I always just want to call it Zinger. But you guys are like like experts in KFC and I'm like the Nando's expert. <laughs> Lani's trying and to I gotta tell you, it tastes, it tastes so much like Nando's. It's yeah, fantastic. Yeah, it does. I'm really proud of that one. Yeah. Uh, now, I think this is, we're getting towards the end. Um, Layla Pankhurst, oh, does so the good. spice pack have enough to cook every recipe in the book once or multiple times? Mm -hmm. Multiple times. Somehow we're going to trigger that thing again. I know, I'm trying to figure it out. You missed one. Um, no, she's crossing the No, there's one under. Oh. No? no? I thought there was one underneath. Um, Louise Shires, with so many versions of all your mm -hmm. recipes, I like to know if you test every single version, for example, dairy-free, gluten-free. Um, low FODMAP, etc. Yes, we test absolutely everything. Um, if I don't personally test it myself, one of the many development team members will test it at least multiple times. We don't, um, we don't have like a three test rule or anything like that. We want to test things. I'm make it happen again. <laughs> we want to test. We want to test things um, like tens, twenties, thirties plus times. Like if they're not getting tested by. Um, yeah, everything yeah. gets half doesn't it? Do yeah, at least. Times. Like by us the in, our, in the kitchen alone, With everything else we would 20, test 30, things 40. at least yeah. 10, 10 plus times. But um, you can be guaranteed that it's like 7 now. 1,000 times. Never! <laughs> we test at least 1,000 times. <laughs> each. For each individual recipe. Each individual recipe. I'm not exaggerating. Um, Sharon Wex, I live in a small country town with limited availability of some ingredients, especially herbs and spices. Is it possible to include a list of substitutions or possibilities of the outcomes if I don't have certain ingredients? So, I think that this book, more than any other book we've ever written, is so accessible. Um, we've got a lot of uh, country recipe developers um, now, and also we've got the QR codes um, built into all of the recipes. So, uh, if anything pops up, after book launch that people are struggling to find or we've we've discovered it becomes a good ad adaptation or something like that we can add that information to the qr code but a lot of that information is already there ready to go and um things like variations yeah things like variations recipes, and that... substitutions and yeah so i think that hang on i got two more Suzanne Stahl, as a busy mum of two, I'm excited for dinners too. However, hubby would like to see if there might be a possibility of a skinny barbecue too. Never say never. Never say never. Mm. Janelle McGowan, I would like to know what's the difference in the gravy recipe. Is there a special ingredient? <laughs> there is a special ingredient. It's called love. It's a, spe it's a secret ingredient, but you might be a happy little Vegemite. <laughs> She's just at the end. <laughs> Um, those are some awesome questions, Skinnies. I yeah. know that there's been plenty that have been asked um, throughout the live and any that we've missed that we haven't been we'll able to cover, through. we'll go through and answer them. But now we have to think about what our favourite one was. 
Money, oh. do you want to do some entertainment while we confer? Yeah, Lance. Just talk to everyone. Read, Give me one second, Skinny. Ask Lani a question. Ask Lani a question. There you go, Lance. <laughs> She's like, deer in headlights. <laughs> Talk to them, Lani. I need questions. Um, being thoroughly, uh, uh, I don't think mine was answered. Somebody's was not answered. Which one was so I read it out. R Renee Kira, can you can you say your question, Renee Kira? Dance, Lani, dance. Dance, magic, dance, magic. Yeah. <laughs> dance, monkey. Can no, you do the plus, oh, Lani? No, I can't block. Lani, we okay. love you. Excuse What's you? the best concert you've ever been to, Lani? Okay. <laughs> so probably Limp Bizkit or Kiss. That was amazing. No, think? But I'm seeing Bring Me The Horizon in like two days. You might need to explain like. that for a lot of people. They're a oh. band. They're a band. <laughs> What's your favourite dessert? <laughs> my favourite dessert is Custard. Who's your favourite act custard. That's my favorite to band. see so far? Kiss or Limp Bizkit? Uh, hi, Lani. What's your favourite recipe? What's my favourite recipe? Contenders or the risotto? Out of this in book, or in this general? book or in general? What's my right, favorite sewed song? Um, oh, what's my favorite? Sugar. Sugar. <laughs> yeah. uh, Tanya Marshman. Would so Tanya, you've won the our favorite question of the evening, uh, mostly because it got my mum and dad up off the couch and, and invite, invited into this live. Um, Tanya asked, would there be a dynasty in the foreseeable future made up of more of your mum and dad's recipes that you grew up with? The ones to date have been amazing. There's nothing like recipes that have been in the family for years. That one, I think, resonated with all three of us because yeah. all three of us... <laughs> Um, you know, have Close a strong connection yeah. um, to our family recipes and our heritage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, Mezzi shared recipes that were important to her during her childhood. Yeah, I consult Brian, with my mum non stop. consults with his mum yeah. um, all the time about recipes. And I'm so blessed to have my mum and dad um, so, so close to me. <laughs> Um, literally asleep on the couch behind <laughs> us. Um, no, just helping me with recipes and giving me, um, you know, ideas and inspiration. And, and not just that, but like, we're so lucky that we grew up with our parents cooking around us yeah. and teaching us about it's food. It's a tradition we want people to do. Like, yeah. this is one of the things it does, is yeah. get you all back cooking together. Yeah, it's so important. So thank you, Tanya, for your amazing question. Thank you, everybody who asked equally amazing questions. Um, don't forget, the Healthy Mixed Dinners 2 is coming out next Friday, 8 p.m. South Australian time. And I think we've covered everything off. And somebody, I love you guys so much. Somebody asked what my favourite band is. Oh, go so, on, please. I have Finish a list. <laughs> okay, so Nirvana, Sweet. that's my favourite band. I'm turning it off, say goodbye. Corn, corn, I'm seeing corn. Um, Bye. Not